Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Seek and Destroy. And today we're going to review two Mortal Kombat Legends animated films. One that came out last year called Scorpion's Revenge. And then the other one that just dropped today as of this video going up. Uh, it should go up on August 31st. And that is the day you can go buy Mortal Kombat Legends Battle of the Realms. Which is right here. Warner Brothers Home Entertainment was nice enough to send me a copy. Which was really awesome of them. And we're going to do spoiler free reviews. So no spoilers when I talk about Scorpion's Revenge. Or when I talk about Battle of the Realms in today's episode. And for those of you out there who want. Because I was gifted a free one. I like to pay it forward. Boom. There's a digital code. Go out there. Go to that website. Put in that code. First person to do it gets a full free digital copy of Mortal Kombat Battle of the Realms. I love gifting that stuff out to you guys. Whenever stuff is sent to me for free, if I'm able to share it with you, I do. I like to. And that's usually what I do when I buy comic books and they come with digital codes. And then obviously we have the movies here that sometimes come in. And whenever I get them, I like to share them with you guys. So if you want to you know, try to win free movies in the future, all you got to do is subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on when I upload new videos. And if you see that it's a review, watch it immediately. Uh, if it's like a movie review, especially if it's animated, because if I have a code, I'll definitely give it out. And I'll let you know within like the first 60 seconds of the video, usually, if I have a code or not to share with you guys. So I'm glad I was able to do that. And I'm glad Warner Bros. Home Entertainment sent me a copy of this a few days early so I could have time to watch it a few times and kind of ingest it and then figure out how to do a review without giving away too many spoilers. Because typically I'm not that kind of reviewer. Like I like to discuss things and break things down and talk about specifics and stuff like that and character motivations and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but with spoiler free reviews, I like to hold some of that back um, just because I, I, that is the kind of stuff that is spoilers to me. Some people will say, oh, certain characters are spoilers to me, or like an event in the movie is spoiler to me. But to me, things that matter to the character and that evolve the character, those are kind of the spoiling things for me. So because we all have different, you know, kind of interpretations of what spoilers are, I'll just try to be as brief as I can as I talk about these two films. Um, so the first one, Scorpion's Revenge, like I said, this came out last year, came out in April of last year, and I think I... I think I was living here in Florida. Uh, it was like right when I got here, like within two weeks of me moving here, I live tweeted it back when I was on Twitter. Obviously, I'm not on Twitter anymore, but I live tweeted this movie and I remember being not into it at first. Like, I think Mortal Kombat, it's a very interesting franchise because anytime they try to interpret it, I feel like they, you know, whoever, whether it's animated or live action, if it's a, a web series or a movie, uh, whatever it is, I feel like they, you know, the creators and the people behind it, always try to pile on too much. There's so many Mortal Kombat games, so many favorite characters of everyone, and I feel like instead of focusing on like five or six characters, they always go a little overboard and they try to squeeze in as many cameos and, and other characters as possible without really doing them a lot of justice. And that's it's a little frustrating for me as someone who's a fan of these characters. Like for me, it's like Street Fighter 2. You know, like with Street Fighter, I always feel like whenever they try to interpret that, it's always too many characters. And, and I like when things take time to an extent. And I like focusing on certain characters. So I would like to see, you know, a Mortal Kombat that just focuses on Scorpion and the Sub-Zero relationship with a little bit of other things. But they always seem to tell that story on top of... A tournament or the setup for the tournament and that's kind of what scorpion's revenge is i think it does a better job than the live action movie did that came out earlier this year um but but you know it it still like started off rocky to me so like the beginning of the movie is scorpion it's kind of his origin and how he interacts with sub-zero and of course we find out there's a twist later about all that if you know the games you know the twist already uh, but i won't spoil that here but it kind of gets into the relationship of uh, scorpion and sub-zero in the opening of scorpion's revenge and sets up his origin story. And then it goes into Liu Kang and Raiden and all that stuff. And then it dips back to Scorpion and it kind of swings back and forth. And at first I didn't really like that too much. But towards the end of the you know Scorpion's Revenge movie, it, it sold me on it. Because I think my, my concern was, okay, Liu Kang's not getting a ton to do here. And he's kind of the, you know, the center of the tournament storyline. And then you have Scorpion, who's not really the center of that storyline. He's the center of his storyline. And the blending of the two just didn't seem to work that much until Raiden got involved and started talking to Scorpion and kind of told him like, hey, you're kind of sitting on the fence or not really sitting on the fence, but you're not really involving yourself and stuff and you're being goaded and you need to see the truth. And so as that truth is revealed, Scorpion changes kind of his you know trajectory in the story and kind of 
combines with Luke Kang's story a little bit. And so that ended up working for me a little bit better than I thought it was. So I remember when I started the movie, I was kind of like, eh, it's two separate stories. Why are they making one movie out of this? And I think Jeremy Adams, who wrote the screenplay, and Ethan Spaulding, who directed the, both of these animated movies, I think they did a good job kind of doing that balance. Uh, you know, it, it was rocky in the first and a little bit in the second act of Scorpion's Revenge, but I thought the third act kind of tied it a little better together. And so I was like, okay, I still don't like it being two stories intertwining together, but the execution of it wasn't too bad. And so I ended up liking Scorpion's Revenge by the end of it. So I don't want to spoil too much more than that. I would just say it does kind of start off as two paths and the two paths converge at, at a certain point. And I think they did it pretty well considering I ha halfway through the movie, I was kind of like, I have no faith that this is going to work out. And then it did and I was kind of like, okay, foot in mouth. I, I, I kind of appreciated it. So uh, so it does it does focus a lot on Scorpion and his interactions with Sub-Zero and, and that storyline. And then it does focus on Luke Kang and Raiden and kind of their storyline with the tournament, along with Johnny Cage and Sonya, who play big parts in it as well. And that's all a great setup for Battle of the Realms. So Battle of the Realms, being the sequel, kind of picks up, I don't think, not too long after the first movie, because the first movie does kind of have a wrap-up of that tournament, but it does set up the invasion of Shao Kahn, which if you played the video games, that's pretty much what happened. I think the first video game, uh, or the set first and second one, was like the tournament, and then the the third or second or third video game was Shao Kahn invading, breaking the rules. Uh, so this is them kind of, uh, you know, Shao Kahn and Raiden having to make a deal in a way to allow for one more tournament because Shao Kahn just doesn't like that he lost and that he doesn't get to conquer Earthrealm. So he kind of, I don't know, he kind of presents it in a way for Raiden to choose to side with a Shao Kahn and the decision making. But Raiden has kind of knowledge and, and a trick up his sleeve that he thinks and, and has faith in um, that, you know, he has a lot of faith in Liu Kang. So he's like, OK, I, I know this sounds crazy to accept these terms, but I'm going to do it because I have faith in this human being called Liu Kang um, that, that I've been watching over all these years. And so this movie, this Battle of the Realm, second one, starts off with Luke Kang's kind of origin story. He has a very Batman-type origin. Uh, I won't go into more spoilers than that. Um, but Raiden does kind of look after him. And it you know, seems that Luke Kang might be the chosen one. The only downside from a narrative is when you start focusing on that, there's not a lot of doubt in Luke Kang uh, throughout the story. Like, uh, throughout this, you're pretty convinced he's going to save the day and there's no like wondering if that's ever going to happen. And that's the only downside when you have stories that have chosen ones in them. Like, you know, my friend Nate's not a big fan of those kind of stories and I'm not always either. Um, but uh, I always like when they say, all right, you're the chosen one. And then the chosen one doesn't exactly mean what everyone thought it meant. But in this case, it does mean what everyone thinks it means. Uh, everyone thinks Luke King's the chosen one and he's exactly what they think he's going to be. And so there's no real twist there. There's no real big thing with it and and that's kind of a little bit of my uh negative critique of this movie of battle of the realms was that okay he's the chosen one and then you pretty much know everything's going to work out because of his actions throughout the movie and even though there's a couple scenes in it that um where it shows lou kind of take it down a step because he's kind of very confident in the beginning and he believes all right i'm going to take down the shao Kahn, i'm going to win this um but there is an event or two that kind of makes him sad i won't say it makes him doubt that he can win um, but it makes him sad, and so it brings out some other emotions in the character. So I kind of like that, but again, it doesn't ever throw any doubt into Liu Kang actually, you know, if whether he's going to save the day or not. And then he kind of becomes very OP by the end of it, and I was kind of like, eh, all right. Uh, you know, so I, I didn't really dig that as much. I, actually, this second film, Battle of the Realms, feels almost like an adaptation of Mortal Kombat Annihilation. It does. Like, there's events, and I know that that movie followed events from the games, and this movie follows events from the games, so of course there's going to be that mirror there. But everything from the decision uh, Raiden makes about, you know, being a god, um, everything from, uh, you know, entering the tournament and fighting against the, the forces of Shao Kahn, who they fight, some of the characters they fight, and some of the matches they team up, like Liu Kang versus Jade. Like, there's things like that, and I'm like, this is just Mortal Kombat Annihilation at times, um, just with a couple of uh, additions. And, and Johnny Cage, you know, doesn't die in the first five seconds or anything, because that was always a frustrating thing in Mortal Kombat Annihilation. So, and then the ending with, the, you know... Uh, people transforming into other things like all, all of that kind of happens in this but it does tie in scorpion again so scorpion does have his own side story in this one where he's after he's being you know 
tricked by you know Quan Chi and Shinnok and that whole thing from the last movie is carried over into this movie and uh, that puts him in the path of the Lin Kuei again uh, where he meets Sub-Zero's brother. So we do get Sub-Zero's brother in this. Uh, then we also get Smoke and a couple of other ninjas, uh, some of them who are robotic. And you get to see kind of the evolution of the Lin Kuei and how they're desperate to you know, protect Earth in a way, but also making shady deals that uh, they think are better for everyone, which aren't. So the Lin Kuei are kind of painted as uh, villains in this one through the eyes of the Grand Master um, who runs the Lin Kuei. He's kind of very villainous in this one and has lost his way. And so Sub-Zero, in, in, in that regard, ends up becoming almost a hero in a way because of that, uh, you know. But that puts him on a path of Scorpion, who he wants revenge on. And there's some cool twists with that story. Again, if you know the video game, you probably know where that story heads. But it's, it's pretty neat. And I like seeing that pan out. So again, it's one of those things where I'm like, okay, in the first one, I liked all the Scorpion stuff and the tournament stuff that I felt was kind of just wedged in there. And I wasn't like a huge fan of it, but it kind of tied together nicely at the end. And in Battle for the Realms, I kind of liked the Scorpion stuff again. Uh, and the tournament stuff was just action. I mean, it's literally just fights in this movie, which is great for Mortal Kombat. I mean, I know that's what a lot of people want and a lot of hardcore fans want. And I would have liked that in the live action movie if they would have just gave us a bunch of good fights. I wouldn't have complained so much about the story, but they try to focus on the story, which was just badly told in the live action version, in my opinion. And the fights I didn't feel like were very good in the live action one, um, which is a shame because they had a lot of talented people work on that. But the editing kind of ruined all the fight scenes. So in least this one, it has it does have a lot of great fights. There's some good pairings of characters fighting each other. There's some cool stuff with cybernetic ninjas versus regular ninjas. There's a lot of cool stuff in this, and I don't want to say too much more than that. Other, that. other than if you're a Mortal Kombat fan, I highly recommend you checking this out because these two movies, they're good. I mean, I like them overall. Uh, I, like I said, I was on the fence in the first half of the, the Scorpion's Revenge, but by the end, I kind of got pulled in and was like, okay, this one, I, I was started off really into it, and then I started to split in the second act when it was just all fights. And then again, the third act kind of pulled a little bit together, but the tail end, like the final big battle in the ending... I didn't like. I kind of wish they saved that for a third movie. And that's what this feels like, Battle of the Realms. It felt really crammed. It was like, we got to get through this new tournament. And then we got to set up this thing. And then we got to get to the invasion. And then we got to do this. Uh, and we got to have this, you know, other power, you know, that comes into play at the end that I don't want to spoil. We got to have all that happen in this condensed time. And I kind of thought that the thing Scorpion and Sub-Zero were working on, like that storyline, I was hoping that was going to be the cliffhanger at the end of this. And that maybe next year we would get a third one that deals with what happens at the ending of this movie. But they kind of wedge it in and I didn't feel like that was necessary. I kind of felt like Luke Kang's journey was really great, just him versus Shao Kahn. And I would have liked to seen that end there. And then the other heroes could have stepped up um, for the battle afterwards. Um, but uh, there was, I don't know, they step up in a way where they're rescuing people. But again, I don't want to get into too many spoilers. But they didn't step up in a way where, I don't know, like I think that they could have single-handedly taken down some kind of threat. I think Liu Kang's journey to Shao Kahn would have been a great bookend for that. And he still could have played a part in the next part in the third movie. But it could have been someone else's story or to elevate some other character. Um, but that's just me personally wanting to see new things done with this franchise that kind of deviates from the games a little bit so it's less predictable. But this kind of cramming it all at once made me feel a little bit like the ending of Mortal Kombat Annihilation where it felt like they added on another battle that didn't really need to be there. But that's just my opinion. But overall I still liked it um, and I liked the fights in it. Like I said, the fights in this one are really good. And there's some great like x-ray camera, you know, bones breaking like the video, like the modern video games have. There's a lot of that in this. People getting stabbed and you're seeing the, you know, bullets going through hearts and stuff like that. I mean, it's it's pretty cool. And the humor with Johnny Cage and the, the relationship with him and Sonya and Jax being there and Stryker, like he was a great addition. I kind of liked all that stuff. And uh, I thought there was some good surprise in it, some deaths that I didn't expect to see and some cool uh, moments overall in the action department. So if that all sounds good, if that sounds up your alley, and if you're a Mortal Kombat fan, I highly recommend checking out Mortal Kombat Legends. These two movies are great, and I hope this is still the start. Even though this feels kind of like an ending, I hope there is more stories to tell in this universe, and I hope these people that make these movies get to tell them, because I think they're overall, they're good, they're enjoyable, they're a lot of fun. 
Um, but like I said, maybe the next iteration of Mortal Kombat, whether it's live action or a TV show, I think a TV show would be really good where you can spend time focusing on each characters like the live action TV show from the early 2000s, which I thought was really good. That focused on Kung Lao, like the original Kung Lao and uh, his two friends. And it focused on them and it, then it would spend a whole episode setting up the Lin Kuei and then it would spend a whole episode setting up the Shia Ryu and then they would have, do a whole episode where those two collide with each other. So to me, I, I think Mortal Kombat lends itself more to a TV show. And so I would like to see that. But if they keep making these animated films, the action in them is really good. I like some of the humor. And uh, and even though the plot loses me at times, it does seem to always bring me back in by the end. And so for that, I commend, you know, Ethan Spaulding, the director, and Jeremy Adams for a good script to do that, to pull that together. But those are my thoughts. As always, you know, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, and we'll continue the conversation down there. And if you did win the digital code, let you know, and got the free movie, let me know what you think. Put your review down in the comments as well. I'd love to hear from you and know who won that code. And Warner Bros. Home Video, thank you so much for sending me a review copy. That was really awesome of you. And anytime I can, like I said to all of you, I will try to pay that forward. If there's a digital code that comes with anything that I get, I will definitely share with you all. So make sure you like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff so you don't miss out. Thanks so much for watching the show. I will see you all in the future. Peace.